Good evening. Thank you for tuning in. Jeremy Taylor. I have two very special guests. We have David Tompkins, the uh, director of the Tweedong Movement, actually director of PR for the Tweedong yes. Movement, and Jane Dai, a very special guest, a Falun Gong practitioner. Unfortunately, her husband was uh, killed by China's government because he's a Falun Gong practitioner and uh, just wanted to do Qigong. Chinese people have been doing Qigong for 5,000 years. You know, Falun Gong is all about uh, telling truthfulness, compassion, tolerance. Everyone should be doing that. But anyway, uh, we'll talk more about that. We want to show you a little video and uh, we'll tell you what this is about. So uh, control room, when you get a chance, can you uh, please, uh, no video just yet. It's coming, hold on a second. So you know what, why don't you tell us about exactly what you do? Well, I'm <coughs> sorry. Sorry, uh, Jeremy. I'm uh, the, the, the director of public relations for the Tweedong Movement. The Tweedong, the Tweedong, or for the Tweedong Center. The Tweedong Center coordinates a movement in China that is uh, bringing freedom. And so it's, it's actually a, a movement in China of people who want freedom. We're, 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 uh, uh, we have thousands of volunteers. Uh, what does Tweedong mean? It's uh, a good question. Tweedong actually means uh, to renounce the Chinese Communist Party. So the way w Chinese people are actually going about finding that freedom is by renouncing the Chinese Communist Party. So it's not actually a political thing. It's, what it is is it's actually people reclaiming uh, their own lives. And as you know, in, in China, there's a great deal of censorship. There's a great deal of propaganda. And what the Communist Party has been doing for many years is trying to control what people can think and what people can do. It's actually by quitting the Chinese Communist Party or renouncing the Chinese Communist Party that people get enough distance in their own heart and mind that they can begin to think for themselves. You know, so speaking of that, uh, as I was telling him uh, last week when we had the, we met, you know, I, I read the Epoch Times every day. It's the one and only Chinese independent newspaper not controlled by China's government. Every other newspaper, believe it or not, here in the United States is controlled by China's government except the Epoch Times. You know, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I know China Daily is controlled by the government. I know they're all controlled by the government except the Epoch. But anyway, even I question, to be honest with you, and I'm a fan, you, you all preach to the choir, but uh, I saw 171 million, and to me, I thought it was quit the party. And I have friends who I turn on to the newspaper, you know, and I try to tell them this is like, you know, the truth, and they're like, you know, and then when you read the Epoch Times, maybe a day or two later, it comes out in the New York Times. New York Times reading the Epoch Times, you know, and then verifying it, vetting it for a day or two, and then it comes out in the New York Times. That's why I love that paper, Epoch Times. But anyway, uh, it says 170 million. I didn't believe it. You know, I questioned it, was skeptical. I was like, you know what, maybe they are a bunch of uh, wackos, quacks. Why don't you explain it's that? A good, it's a good point. And, and I've actually had many people ask about this, uh, this particular question. So the, the Tweedong movement uh, has 171 million people in China and around uh, Chinese people around the world who have renounced the Chinese Communist Party. And so a lot of people ask the question, you know, 171 million seems like an awful lot. And the number one question that really comes up is the Chinese Communist Party only has, it only has ever had 40 to 60 million people. So how do you get 171 million people out of that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a valid point. The thing is, when people renounce the Chinese Communist Party, it's not just the Chinese Communist Party. There's actually three organizations. One is the Chinese Communist Party, one is the Communist Youth League, and one is the Young Pioneers. Explain Youth League and Young Pioneers to our audience. Youth League is... And this is, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I know yeah. Richie tells us to, like, don't let me talk, shut okay. me up. But just, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, the, the Young Pioneer, or sorry, the Youth League would be teenagers. It would be the equivalent to, uh, you know, Boy Scouts here. And then you have the Young Pioneers, which would be elementary school kids. So these are, you know, in, in China, people have, um, you know, some people have joined one of these organizations volu uh, voluntarily. Many have also been forced to join one of these organizations. And so if we look at the total population who have joined any one or all of these organizations, we're looking at a total population of about half the country, about 700 million people. So now we're looking at about 100 and, uh, 171 million people out of a possible 700 million. But it's not limited to that. Because what happens is that 
since, you know, the CCP has been around for 65 years or longer. And in that period of time, there has been a number of wars. They've fought in North Korea, they've fought in Vietnam, they've fought in India, they've fought in many countries. Um, many people who grow up in, in the rural areas, they, you know, they, they have maybe one or two years of formal education, and they have been, you know, they've been the fighters. They've been the people who've gone out and fought in these different wars. At the same time, the, the CCP over the past 65 years has had a number of campaigns of mass violence where they've gone and they've killed um, either the people who owned the land or they've, you know, they've killed the, the uh, during the Cultural Revolution, they killed many of the, you know, the people who were well-educated or, you know, had uh, you and know, just different to, kinds of professions. To, sorry to cut you off, but just to let our audience know, you just said CCP. Just I want to let our audience know that he, uh. David's referring to Chinese Communist Party, which today, you know, I know you all find it hard. China's not communism anymore. Look, China's government admits they're the Communist Party of China, or as David said, a Chinese Communist Party, also known as China's government today in 2014. The regime, yeah. Exactly. And I'd like to bring in uh, Jane, you know, and uh, just uh, before we do run the video, you know, why don't you tell us what happened to, uh, you know, you and your daughter and your husband and, because yeah. you're a Falun Gong practitioner and that's what this show's about. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, uh, I'm a Falun Gong practitioner. Yeah, I, yeah, my husband was killed during the persecution in 2001, uh, simply because he went to Beijing and handed a letter, and the letter said, this practice say give my father-in-law second life and our whole family practice and just stop the torture uh, killing you know and uh, like you told me this was three times and you know what she's saying is uh, you know first of all Falun Dafa how that's number one Falun Dafa is good it's good to tell the truth it's good to have compassion anyway um Mm -hmm. But you told me, uh, you know, he was arrested three times, you know, because he refused to renounce it. And then finally, you know, just while he was in jail, they tortured him to death. Is that accurate? Yes, he died. He, Can you yeah. explain what happened and, you know, how you got the body uh, back or how it all wound out? Okay. Uh, the first time he was arrested because he, he fly to Beijing, hand a letter in the appeal office. Then he was uh, uh, arrested and the 610 office uh, sent him back to Guangzhou in the airport and he, the, he working for the Guangzhou Paper Manufacturing Corporation and the, uh, co the leader of the company waiting there and then he, because he, he refused to renounce Falun Gong, so he directly sent to jail. And at that time it's winter, January, and my, my father-in-law tried to look for his son and bring the warm clothes and go to every police station, could not find his son, you know. And that's the first time arrest. And 15 days later, he was released. And second time he arrested is uh, one year later. In uh, uh, then he they come to kidnap him. He locked door and opened the door. He just was kidnapped. And they uh, that's the and this is three weeks brainwashing. Yeah. Um, the. The, the third time is uh, he was uh, appeal in Tiananmen Square, he was arrested. An appeal in Tiananmen Square. Yeah. And you also mentioned, uh, keep this in mind, let's talk about 610 office, David, but uh, mm. before we talk about that, you know, mm -hmm. 610 office is uh, China's government Gestapo. They're in charge of attacking, you know, Falun Gong in China. And I believe also... It, it refers actually to, uh, to, to June 10th. When, when the organization was formed, and the, the purpose uh, is actually, of course, uh, 1999, when it, uh, it was formed for the purpose of persecuting Falun Gong. And it's a federal agency within, this, within the, 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 the Communist Party itself that oversees all police and uh, justice, so it has departments at all levels of the government and oversees the, the persecution of Falun Gong. It's one of the organizations that actually coordinates it. And we'll talk about a little bit later uh, about another organization, uh, which is called the, China, uh, the Chinese Anti-Cult uh, Anti -Cult Association, um, which has uh, branches in overseas countries, one of those branches here in Flushing, New York. Absolutely. Definitely let's talk about their campaign here in the United States to hurt.
China's people. Speaking of to export the campaign of hate. You know, speaking of you know, and I do want to talk about your husband again, but we have uh, the video footage that's ready. Okay. I'd like to show it, and we could talk about it, and you could tell what's going on about. Variety of. Uh, so what you're what you're seeing here is um, uh, what you're seeing here is actually a, a, a campaign that happened in in May of 2008, where uh, a mob of of Chinese uh, uh, people uh, were were actually incited to um, to you know violence against Falun Gong practitioners. One of those in practitioners, Flushing, Queens. This in is Flushing. in Queens, New York. Jane, Jane. In, in, uh, in front of the library. Yeah. Right in front Main, of the library. Main exactly. Street, yeah. Actually, it was Tweedown volunteers who were just putting out their tables. It was uh, the volunteers for, for the organization that I work for just put out their tables um, when they were attacked on the street. By and China's government agents here in New York. Well, no, these are for the most part just Chinese people um, who live in, uh, in Flushing. But, the, but behind them, what, who's, who's actually pushing them and inciting them to violence, and it's done through propaganda, is done through misinformation and lies, but who's inciting them to violence is, um, you know, uh, basically was the, 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 the Chinese consul general of New York, mm -hmm. and uh, he admitted in a, in a taped telephone interview with, a, with an investigator, um, actually the investigator works for... Um, works for one of our board members is, is the head of the world organization to investigate the persecution of Falun Gong. Mm -hmm. um, so again, so he admitted to being behind all this mm -hmm. and and uh, sort of inciting getting people to to uh, just regular Chinese citizens in Flushing Queens to attack yeah. and harass Falun Gong, practitioners. Falun Gong practitioners. So not just are they harassing them and attacking them in China. Yeah. They do it here. As and a matter of fact they do it in Argentina. Well, this uh, it actually just happened recently in Argentina, where where uh, when Xi Jinping was visiting Argentina, um, the the um, you know the 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 Falun Gong practitioners were trying to hold up signs to to uh, show to to Xi Jinping and to to tell people tell him that Falun Gong is practiced around the world and that they sh need to stop the persecution there. They were attacked by, by Chinese uh, people who worked for the, the embassy there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's happened on a number of occasions. You've you mentioned before also Mexico. It happened in 2011. Exactly. A you different know, set of circumstances, but it did happen there. And, you know, we were watching the video there and, uh, you know, waving the uh, Chinese uh, flag. And like you said, they're being incited by China's government. We were also talking about, how about, uh, you know, he, John Liu, Chinese guy who ran for mayor, you know, I think some of his staff was, as a matter of fact, you know, for straw donors. Fraud. Two of them, two of them were imprisoned. For, yeah. Uh, for so I mean, you want to actually, uh, Jane, uh, mention something about John Liu? Yeah. Well, I think actually, what I, I think what Jane, you know, what happened was Jane was actually, uh, Jane was actually there in in the in the uh, in the yeah. video, and so maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah, because the Falun Gong practitioner showed John Liu this video, and. And I'm there. And John Yu replies that there's no evidence of any violence in the video. And John yeah. Liu is running for New York State Senator. Right now. And if, uh, so, and what you're saying, Jane, is like uh, he said that, uh, like you just said, so he doesn't even care that if Chinese people are being, Falun Gong practitioners are being beaten up in Queens. I mean, you can judge for yourself. I mean, the, basically, people were calling for Falun Gong practitioners to be killed, mm -hmm. and uh, he was shown this particular video, and said there was no evidence of any uh, violence. So, I mean, said it straight to the Falun Gong practitioners, and and uh, and that was the John end. John Liu being controlled by China's government. There's uh, there's a lot of evidence. Two, uh, of course, two of his uh, people um, in in the campaign uh, before. Were, were put in, in previous campaigns, were put in prison. They were uh, indicted. Were charged and they were indicted. They were put in, and they're now in prison uh, for, for, you know, illegal uh, campaign activities. And in June and July of this year, he suddenly has received $500,000 for his Senate bid. A lot of that, a lot of that money coming from outside of the, uh, um, outside of the district. Uh, so, you know, there's, uh, there's sort of a lot of questions. But behind John Liu, you know who who's really uh, he when you look at it he's he's got three three associations um, Chinese associations that have very close connections to the United Front Department uh, Works Department 
So you know whether it's uh, whether it's the Fukien American Association or you're talking about the the uh, uh, the Beijing uh, what was that one the Beijing American uh, Association of New or the Beijing Association of New York and you you have also the other one um, uh, led by Michael Chu which don't, is don't tell uh, me these are nonprofit organizations. They're all nonprofit organizations. They're all nonprofit organizations. It's, there's a there was a there was a report written. It's actually still still available on the website of the Hunan uh, provincial government, uh, the Hunan provincial uh, government website in China. It's in Chinese. The report suggests that the best way to export the hate campaign around the world. And especially into the United States is to open nonprofit organizations and have them funded because there was no there's no obstacles to opening a nonprofit organization. Have them funded by local businesses that they control. Yeah, but it's a nonprofit organization that has a hate attack campaign against innocent Chinese people living in Queens, New York, or yes. in every country all over the world. You want to say something about John Liu? Uh, yeah, I I just because. This fear shifting from China to here now, I, I, I was shocked. Yeah, and I hope people together we have to stop this. Yeah. Stop what exactly? This violence and this hate campaign, we should not tolerate. Should not yeah. tolerate. Since actually in 2008, you can see that there was a lot of violence. But after this. After this uh, outbreak of mass violence, they actually, that was when this uh, organization, it, it's called the Chinese uh, Anti-Cult World Alliance, uh, was, was formed. And it was formed by three people who were in the background with that, uh, uh, at that particular event. Um, so it's formed here in New York, but they, you know, they shifted. So it's, there's not a direct incitement to hatred. There's not a direct, sorry, there's not a direct incitement to violence. But what they're doing is they're spreading uh, the same materials. They have the same mission that the Chinese Anti-Cult uh, Association in China has, and that is one of the key, one of the three key uh, institutions in China that is carrying out the genocide there. So it, they have a branch now here since 2008, but it's not. It, it's hatred, but it's not a. It's, it, we can't go after them as a hate crime because it's not a direct incitement to violence. But nevertheless, they're still spreading lies and misinformation. It's still the same information that is inciting the, the genocide in China. And so people like, there's many people like, like Jane who come here and, and they're seeing the same materials that, that they see in China. So China's government is uh, giving directives to their embassies in each city and uh, to get the people, tell me if I'm right or wrong, but the embassy or the consulate Chinese in New York, you know, will call the people or text them, you know, mobilize them to go against these uh, Falun Gong practitioners because they know when they're out and then they just uh, rally their people to attack these people coming from uh, Beijing, the orders? We have, we have the evidence from 2008 where, yes, the Chinese consul general admitted to, to being behind the, the violence. Um, and, and encouraging people to do that. We don't have, um, of course, this particular consul general was in place until uh, the end of 2011. So three years after that, he stayed in place. Um, but we don't have uh, specific evidence that they're doing it, but we know that uh, it's their common practice. Because mm -hmm, we didn't get a chance on the video, but on the video, you actually have the, I think, uh, general counsel admitting that he's uh, rallying the people and, yes. uh, you know, because we couldn't show it. Yeah. So uh, back to your husband, if that's okay. You know, I want you to, like, uh, tell the people, you know, because they don't know about Falun Gong. They don't know that 60,000 innocent Chinese Falun Gong practitioners have been murdered. You know, they don't, our audience doesn't know about, you know, harvesting organs and organ harvesting and... Yeah. Well, where that number comes from, and I'll let. Sorry, I, I'm not. In, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'll let Jane talk to that in a moment. But there, they, we know that there's 3,500 people. We have the names of 3,500 people who've been killed. We, the the 60,000 uh, number that you mentioned, is 
is um, based on organ harvesting numbers. It's believed that um, when you look at, at all of the uh, organs, uh, organ harvesting is, is a practice that increased uh, from, from a, a few, a handful of people uh, in 1999. Previous to 1999, they were harvesting organs from Uyghurs, uh, but on a, on a very small scale. Uh, after the persecution of Falun Gong began in 1999, the, the, the organ transplants in China exploded. But uh, I'm not sure if you know, but um, China has no source for organs. It has a great deal, a, a great number of, of organ transplants that are happening, but there are no source for organs. So where do the organs come from? There's not What's enough people on death row. Th well, I mean, on death row, you know, they, they've, typically, row. they've typically been... Uh, executing about 1,500, 1,700 people a year, and how do you come up with 10,000 uh, tra mm -hmm. organ transplants? A year. A year. And actually in 2006, um, it, the, the number had been up to about 18,000. Mm -hmm. so, so the 60,000 is over the, course of, uh, over the course of 10 years or, or more, 15 years now, there's a large number of, of uh, of organs that even when you take off the executed prisoners that are unaccounted for, where do they come from? Well, you know, they, there's a very strong, there's very strong evidence that exists that those organs come from prisoners of conscience. The largest group being Falun Gong practitioners. Now, because this really came to light in 2006, and actually the UN was asking questions about where the organs were coming from before that, but it really came to light in 2006 and because there was no coverage of it, or because it was not really um, accepted, I guess, and, uh, and given much publication, um, in 2008, they began to, we began to hear reports of Tibetans uh, having blood tests when they were in prison, uh, Christians, democracy dissidents. So the practice then spread and, and is, is now uh, including many other people. It remains, however, that the largest group of people in, in detention in China, um, you know, as, as, politi as political prisoners, I guess, if you will, or prisoners of conscience, are Falun Gong practitioners. And what we're talking about here is transplant tourism. Just want to make that real clear one more time. Transplant tourism, Americans, Canadians, Europeans, it's, wherever, going to China. And it's, a it's, practice, it's a practice where a person will go here, from here. They need an organ. They'll go from, from here to China. And within two weeks, they will be tissue type matched to somebody uh, who on a on a um, on a on a computer list, and uh, they'll take that person out of the prison. They'll execute them, and the organ will be removed and transplanted and, over to and the person. And not just to cut you off, but I'm sorry, but a lot of the times they're not even executed. A lot of the times they're given a shot which numbs the body, and then they remove the organs while the person's still alive. The person the, gets to watch their organs being removed, but the, we're running the, out of the time. Means of, the means of, remo the, means of, of uh, the removal of the organ is the means of execution. And it, there's even been instances where a one, one guy was a police officer who, who defected, and he reported that, um, you know, people have even, he witnessed people being killed uh, without anesthesia. Without anesthesia. Wow. That's... He was a police officer. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear this on the website. Yeah. Uh, the Let's finish uh, go, up with your husband. Yeah, so the okay. second time your husband got he got arrested once, but he refuses to give up uh, qi gong, you mm -hmm. know, uh, breathing exercises and meditation. He mm -hmm. got arrested again, mm -hmm. and then you said a year later he got arrested a third time. Yeah, the uh, yeah the third time is he he appealed in uh, he appealed he, he, he holding the banner in front of the in the Tiananmen Square, Beijing. Mm -hmm. yeah, he held a banner in, and just yeah. he just held a banner in Tiananmen Square because there's nowhere to appeal. The appeal office not accept them and send them back where they come from, and so that's why Tiananmen Square is the only place they can. They can Falun Gong practitioners yeah. uh, were not allowed to even have lawyers represent them. They had no place to appeal, and so what they did in the end was they would go to Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square is considered the court of last appeal where you basically appeal to the hearts of Chinese people. So that's why they went there. They and, had no other way to And then what happened with else. your husband? Yeah. The last time he got arrested, tell me from that until... Yeah, and then I, I got the... Uh, he was arrested, and, and my, my visa went out. I have to leave China. 
So um, I found out his dad on the internet, Minghui Internet. And his, his body was dumb in the abundant heart. And my, my husband... His body was what? He, his body was dumb in the abundant heart near Guangzhou city. And my husband's elder sister was informed to, to look at the body and she was immediately arrested and sentenced two years in labor camp without child. And my husband's father was shocked by this. Three months later, he died. Yeah, the whole family just falling apart. But in China, million people just like us. Yeah. Nobody can see it. Nobody can hear their, nobody can see their, nobody can hear their voice. And then, like you told me, then how did it happen where they just handed you a box? Yeah, and, and Australian, I, Australian government helped me to get the ashes back. And Australian they, government helped you get your husband's ashes back? Yes, yes. Because they, they refused to give me the visa to go back. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, that is a. You know, sorry to hear that. Very sorry, you know, so, uh... There's millions of these kinds of stories. What a tragedy. And, and I was mentioning 60,000, you mentioned the number 60,000. We actually believe the number to be much, much higher than that. Mm -hmm. Because there, there are stories of, of, uh, and of mass no graves doubt. and there's these There's no doubt, because you have David Mattis and uh, David Kilgore. You're talking about Canada's uh, members of parliament and the lawyers. He, he's, a, he's a renowned human rights lawyer, mm -hmm. yes, from Canada who's investigated this. Yeah. You know, we're running out of time. I want to give you the last word because you said you wanted like a minute to uh, finish That's, up. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the, I think the best thing that, that people can do at this point in time is to become aware because there's, there's really very little awareness of, of uh, and very little uh, ability to become aware of what's really going on So what on should they do? We've got 15 seconds. What do you want people to do? People need to look and, and search for the truth about what the real situation is in China because they're not getting the full information from the media, from the corporations, from, from the...